Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. Today it's back into Decisive Campaigns, Ardennes Offensive, and this is our Let's Play against the Allied AI. We are the Axis or Germans. It is now round six, so it is going to be the daytime turn of day two. Uh, it is day, day type, day, you can see it goes day, afternoon, night, morning, day, afternoon, night, four turns per day. Uh, there is mist, and it is above zero. Okay, good to know. Let's jump out here after we look at this, actually. Axis has 104 victory points. Now, we need 100 for a major victory, um, and we, uh, we occupy enough on the map to do that so far we're also picking up a point or two i believe for losses if you look at all of the losses that we have uh here they add up to 490 points if you look at the allied losses it adds up to 683 now that doesn't you know directly uh carry over into victory points but if this gets big enough a big enough difference you do get some victory points uh for that for causing more casualties so press any key let's actually go up and look at the stats and we'll just see what do we have on the map we've got about 8500 troops the allies it does appear did get some reinforcements last time as they're up to 6225 if we look at casualties sustained we have sustained about 700 we're just now starting this turn. Uh, the Allies have sustained about 630 and inflicted. Well, that's just going to be the inverse, right? So total troops, I mean, we still definitely have an advantage. You would expect that the Allies are going to continue to get reinforcements to kind of even this up. We could go and look at all this, but I'm not going to. Uh, I mean, you can go and look at the stats for all of this. Let's do go over to our mailbox, though, and we'll see here are the round six conditions. So in case case we forget uh, this would be more applicable to the grand campaign or if you had you know variable weather or something like that um, supply report okay new supply has arrived and it's coming into that major supply source that town up here uh, to the northeast I guess it's uh, Diuze or Duze sure uh, 3344 supply points there here's the victory points again uh, fuel report and again, these will all be far more uh, helpful when you play the Grand Campaign, or at least a bigger scenario than this one. Uh, we are getting some political points here. Uh, we have this main town here that I talked about where our main supply source is. Uh, Juvelis, uh, we also have that, so we get five for that, and we get five for Lezzy. As you can see, we're up to 84 political points, so we may want to look into spending some of our big overall cards. And what are those? Well, let's go to combat units. Unfortunately, we don't have one of those. I mean, that just kind of gives you a free counter on the map. Rear area, truck column, repair bridge, replacements. I mean, we could try replacements again. We've got so many political points that may be worth it now. Uh, we haven't really had a problem with the bridges. They didn't blow the bridge uh, there at Lezzy, and so we were able to get across and uh, didn't need that. But we may want to go to replacements. What would this do? Let's see. Uh, well, it tells you the same thing. You don't really know what you're going to get. Um, it says it'll send those replacement troops to the highest headquarters in your order of battle. Okay, let's just play it. Uh, they have arrived. We got uh, 10 Nocturpen, one new Panther. Okay, excellent. Two Panzer Shreks, 20 Volks Grenadiers, and one captured Jeep that I guess we're using for our own purposes now. Uh, and they did go out to the highest headquarters. Now, there's no way, I don't think, of taking them from those headquarters and putting them out. I think the headquarters maybe automatically does that. Uh, that's probably something we should figure out as we go along here. So it's the daytime turn. I haven't moved anything yet. As you can see, the kind of big overall situation here is we're kind of, we're the, you know, units all lit up here. We've sort of got the Americans uh, in a vice grip, or at least I hope, but they're trying to break out here to the south a little bit. And so we're going to have to keep falling back here a little bit. Uh, we're in pretty good shape in the north, at least for now, and we overlook the valley uh, where Aracourt sits. You can see the Americans do have their major supply source at Aracourt. Okay, let's go up to the 559th uh, and see what's going on. Well, let's go to their headquarters first. 
I'm going to put on the stack and mini. I like to have this up with the hair headquarters. We'll go to the officer. We'll see what he's got. Uh, defensive cards in green, hold and entrench. Uh, care is just a morale sort of thing. Uh, recon speaks for itself and attack offensive here. Um, he has only six points though. So we're probably not going to be spending any this time. We really don't need anything defensive. I don't think, I mean, you know, we could potentially put something on. We had this big, huge American stack that knocked us off this perch last turn. So he might have to get a little defensive, uh, but we'll think about that. Uh, other than that, I think we're just going to leave this as is. So let's get into the artillery uh, where we can do some damage. So we'll get off inspect, go over to move, and we'll go look for our artillery. We have one artillery group here. If you look at the mini stack, there's the artillery part of the regiment and we can fire at any of this. Now, of course, we're going to have more damage done to soft targets uh, with our this artillery. Um, well, let's hit these pioneers. Why not? No return fire expected because we're not in their direct line of sight. So we'll blast away there and see if we cause any damage. Well, we knocked out two trucks and a bazooka. Okay, we knocked down their readiness. Uh, their experience went up, a little bit of loss of morale, and we did knock down their entrenchment to a 55. Excellent. Now we'll back up to our other artillery. We have two artillery here. One is also regimental. One is the divisional artillery. Uh, let's have the regimental. Eh, let's go right there. Why not? Um, trying to hit these softer targets. So we hit that unit and we cause ca casualties to 10 rear area uh staff members i get well they're not staff members but rear area troops three trucks one bazooka we're knocking out those bazookas we take down uh their readiness quite a bit okay and then we'll also then fire the regiment or the divisional artillery let's have this hit well, I want to get rid of this, so let's hit there again. We hit that, and you can see we take out quite a bit here. Uh, this is the bigger artillery. We've got the 152 millimeter Soviet guns that have been repurposed for our purposes, uh, the 122 millimeters and the 105 millimeters, so they're going to really tear up infantry. We take out all of their mortars. Uh, he had two, 160 millimeter, 181 millimeter. We take out the AT gun. We take out the bazooka. He's still got two of those left. Uh, we take out one truck, but 60 GI veterans and 10 GI greens we take out there, and we really just decimate his res readiness. Now then, we have yet another divisional artillery here. This is so weak now, I don't think it really makes sense to hit it. Let's hit the uh, pioneers or his engineers. Uh, I guess the Germans call them pioneers. Uh, on the other side, the allies would call them engineers. Uh, 30 engineers are taken out, two US trucks, one regular truck. So this is the GMC, this is the truck uh, MG. It's got a 50 um, machine gun on it, 50 caliber machine gun on it. But anyway, we take those out. Uh, we knocked down their readiness quite a bit. And so we fired all of this artillery over here, uh, except for this one that sits back here. And do I want to move this up a little bit? Maybe. Um, we may take this turn and just, I don't want him to really move up on this hilltop. I don't want him to get any intercept fire here. I would like to bring him around here, but I also don't want him to be visible. As he is right now, he's... I don't want to say he's invisible, but they don't have any direct light of sight on it. I'm just going to go ahead and, and uh, fire off some ar already there. Now, we have no way of knowing since we don't really have direct line of sight. We had a question mark there. We don't know the damage that we did there. Uh, we'll just have to take it on faith that we did do some. I am going to take this unit. I'm worried about that big American unit uh, there. I'm tempted to go put him back in the woods where we would uh, have a better defensiveness from an you know infantry standpoint 
or maybe actually put him here. He got roughed up a little bit, and you can see his readiness is only 46. I'm going to go put him in these woods, actually. So let's move him over there. He's then now in the heavy woods, if we look at that, or heavy forest, uh, if we look at that. We've still got this unit over here kind of perched up on a level two. Uh, you can see the elevation there. He's overlooking this road. Uh, but this guy got chewed up a little bit, so I'm going to move him back over here kind of behind some other units that have got some more strength. Uh, and also, obviously, infantry is going to do better in the heavy woods. All right, uh, let's try to take out this armor unit. And we'll go right here. He's got 8 to 1 odds. That would take us to 12 to 1. Let's go back and look at this. Do we need this guy for anything else? Not really. Not really. So let's uh, let's do it. Let's put them both in here. 12 to 1. Let's go all out attack on 12 to 1 and see what happens. Uh, we do lose some men there. We lose 30 overall. Maybe we should have just done a regular attack. Eh, you know, you go back and forth on that based on the odds. We did take out two M10 tanks and an M18. He still has one M10 left in that group, but we knocked him back. Did we win that? I don't know if I'd like to give up 30 men on that attack, but we did, and it's too late to take it back, so we're just going to live with it. Um, this guy could get moving out here, and maybe we'll do that, but I want to attack this unit first, and I think... Let's see what the odds look like there. Well, it's 18 to 1 with just this unit out of town. I'm going to do that. I guess I'm going to be a little more... Uh, no, let's do an all-out attack. We don't lose anything. He loses a truck. He doesn't lose his veterans. They just retreat. Hmm. Okay. Well, we knocked him back, but we didn't really kill anything much there. Just a truck. Surprised we didn't do a little better, but we did knock him back there. Uh, now then, let's take this motorized and get this moving this way. Because what I'd like to do, you know, he, he is threatened to move out this way. What I'd like to do, knock this out of the way and start to look to get behind him. So he's got no retreat out of here. Uh, yeah, let's take the motorized. We'll move him one. We take no intercept fire there. And let's take the other motorized and move him down here as well. Now he's only got three movement points. He He's got six. Let's see what an attack looks like here. Ten to one. Well, that's pretty good. Uh, let's just do an attack. Uh, our our all-out attacks haven't looked great this time. Let's just do an attack, see what happens. We lose nothing, and we completely destroy this unit. Uh, two bazookas, ten rear area, and one greyhound, all killed in action, that unit just no longer exists. Now, do we know something is in here or not? Well, it's a great question. Let's go to the hex and look at the hex stats. You can see the hide is higher than the recon. Now, that means we don't know if this unit's in here or not, or this unit, a unit, is in here or not. So let's move this unit. We may get some intercept fire out of town here, but let's, you know, we need to move down here. Let's move him there. Now let's see what this is. Well, it's 32 to 34. We still don't know whether anything's there or not. I'm guessing with all of the activity we saw some last time, something actually is there. And I'm not going to move this, try to move this into town. Uh, I'm going to leave it here, although we, could, well, we can't get there. I was going to say maybe we'll try to cut all these guys off this way. Could, oh, the engineers could get all the way here. But I don't really think we want to do that. Um, 290 pioneers. They've got some anti-aircraft. They've got some anti-tank. I could leave them right up here. We could also start moving these guys down. I mean, these are very weak units. And I get we've got a really nice overwatch, you know, situation here. But we'll still have that with this unit. I am going to move down here. And I'm going to look and see. Okay, he's got something else in here. He's got pioneers, <coughs> excuse me, pioneers in there as well. I'm actually going to reverse that. I'm going to move right back up here. Uh, I would rather have the elevation advantage, and we're being conservative, I get that, but we're in a very good situation as of right now, and I don't see any reason to push it if we don't have to. 
I will take these engineers. Let's take these engineers uh, and move them here. Ah, let's put him right there. He's probably going to come under attack at some point. I could put him up here in Overwatch, right? Uh, so I would have, you know, wasted some points. Why don't we put them up here? And I'll tell you why, because I'm just concerned he could get something up into this hex, and then we have to start worrying about this town. Now, we could always take the headquarters and move it over here. Uh, but let's do that. That gives us a little zone of control there. We're just outside of town, and now we're threatening to envelop him here, or at least all of these forces. Uh, what kind of attack odds do we get here? If we use both, it's two to one. We throw the anti-tank in. It's still only two to one. I think we're just going to sit here again. Again, we're in a good situation where I feel pretty confident in our position. So I'm just not going to take any wild risks. Now, I could move this up, bring this into the attack. We would get a little concentric. I'm going to move him up one. He may take some intercept fire. No, he did not. Now, let's see if we put all three of these in, all four of these in. Well, we eventually get up to three to one, but I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm actually going to move him back too, and I get it. I'm, I'm knocking down their readiness a little bit, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. Uh, okay, we've got some artillery out here. These are the Vespies and the Grilles. Uh Let's hit something soft. Let's hit this unit if we can. Now, they do not have direct line of sight of us, so there should be no return fire, and we just lob that up over the ridge. Doesn't look like we kill anything. We do knock down his readiness. Okay, we'll take it. These uh, units are going to stay right here. Now, I didn't use any cards over here. I could have. Uh, we did do a couple of attacks, but he's only got eight. I would like to see him get back up to 12 so we can use that attack card. We don't really need, you know, defense cards right now. Recon, not really. We could, you know, extra morale always helps, right? Now, this unit, what are we going to do with this? I think I'm going to keep it right here. We may eventually get knocked back here, but for now, I'm okay with him just sitting out here. Our real problem is in the south here. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is take this core headquarters and come back here to this town. Uh, what town is this? He says it's Moacourt. Uh, so we're going to back up there. Now we've got the regimental headquarters here. This is the core. The, uh, this is the Panzer Brigade. I'm sorry, this is the br Brigade headquarters, the 113th. He's got the guys in blue. Now we have more guys in blue here. Uh, and we're going to back them up into town here. Or at least that's what I'd like to do. So let's take, first of all, the motorized. We may get intercept fire, but we don't. Okay, let's take the Panzer Jaegers and put them in there. Let's take the tanks, which have a better range. We could take them back here, but I think I'm going to put them right in the urban area. All right, and then we've got the anti-aircraft. And for now, anyway, I'm going to put him there, but I think we'll change that here in a minute because we're going to shift everything down a little bit. And I think what we'll do is put the headquarters here this motorized here this part of the tank brigade there this motorized will come up here and then this part of the tank brigade there yeah he does have a shot on our headquarters but i think that's okay and what, then i'm going to move the anti-aircraft down here with him they've got a little anti-tank for one thing the l88 millimeters but this also protects these units against against airstrikes uh so we'll put a little anti-aircraft now he may attack us across here i'm taking a little bit of a risk there but i'm okay with it i think we'll be all right uh we do have a little gap here but if that starts to happen we can move the core headquarters around we could also take part of this tank brigade and move it around 
So I think that's about going to do it. Let's make sure we shot all of our artillery. We've got that one. We shot that one, this one, or both of these. We shot this. We really ripped up some things with our artillery. Uh, we could try to take this town, but I am not. Now it says our recon's high enough. I'm not going to risk it. We have not had any visibility. Yeah, we didn't have visibility until right now. We must be getting it from moving up here. But I don't want to walk into an ambush. I don't think we have to. I think we're in a strong position. I'm just going to wait and see if this starts to pull him back. If he doesn't occupy this town this time, we should have enough. We look here. Yeah, we don't have an eyeball on it. We don't have it from here either or from here. I'm just a little nervous about it. So I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to leave it. We shot this artillery. Uh, we could actually move him one, but I believe I've got him in town. I like to, to have these in town uh, just to protect against the airstrikes, right? So the artillery to the extent we can. Now this is not in town, uh, but we do have anti-aircraft up here. Actually, it wouldn't protect this. Probably next time, I don't want them all stacked together. I may bring him over to this town. Maybe that's the place for him, is here in Zonre. So we'll try to move him over here next time and get him in town. I just don't want our arty guns to get taken out by an airstrike. Uh, they're in a good position here, but this is the even better position uh, to hide in. And we're still behind this ridge, right? So we'll do that. So we fired all of our arty. All of this looks good. We're back in town here. Now, he did drive us out of Burris, so it's possible he's got enough strength to knock us back here. We're going to find out now next turn end of turn here come the americans and let's pause that and let's back this up you can see it keeps going here it's going to end up being we're up to 51 steps all right that looks like it's it so we'll go all the way back to zero and see what the americans do here and team walker moves so he's moved into this hex okay well, now he's gone. Now we don't see him. He must have moved back here where we have no visibility. And yeah, sure enough, you can see him moving up and through town there as he comes over to try to help this situation. Uh, unknown unit. We don't see it again. Okay, unknown unit. Team Hall moves, and he's going to move down into what looks like a swampy type area. Yeah, they're moving through town. When we lose visibility of them is when they go into towns. And you can see he's moving quite a bit north as we're really threatening to get all the way around these troops here. And he moves into town. Okay. Lots of just moves. He did have something in town. You saw it there. I think it was Team Kelly that just moved through town. Now he's coming off of this line and down into town. But he's keep, you know, he's still moving down the road. You can see he's pulling all the way back now. We do hit him with some intercept fire here. Our mortars, 81 millimeter, 120 millimeter. Now, one thing we haven't been doing is firing our mortars from these infantry units. We probably could be doing that a little bit more, but I want to keep their readiness up. And again, I feel like we're in pretty good uh, position. He fires artillery at this group in town, and because of the extra protection. We don't really take any losses there. Team Young comes down here to this bridgehead. Uh, he's into the swamp there. We hit him with intercept fire again. The 50 millimeter packs, the 81 millimeter mortar. Looks like he just crossed over the bridge and wants to come this way. And yeah, he, oh, he attacks us there. So he did attack us out of town. You can see he's quadruply stacked here. And we did take some decent losses here. We lost 120 infantry, two Panzer Shreks, and two Opal Blitzes, the trucks. Uh, he lost 20 GI Green, two Bazookas, an M3 half-track, and a truck. Well, that was a really nice victory for him, actually, out of town. And he had a lot... Well, I say he had a lot. He had 160 veterans and 60 green. We had 400 infantry, but that was not enough to hold on there. All right, he's moving back towards town with this armored unit. We hit him with intercept fire, our mortars again. 
He has crossed over. Now, this was probably part of the stack that knocked us off this perch last time. He's starting to move up this road. Uh, it's part of the reason I wanted to move back here. Let's get, well, this does not have the height advantage, but at least we're in the deep woods if that is armor. And it is. So we do have an advantage there, but this is a very weak unit. And we may have to back him up one more or switch places here or something because this is a very strong armored unit. Even if we're in the heavy woods, we may have a problem there. All right. This is just it playing through. And there we go. That's the end of the day turn. We're now into the afternoon turn. It's still misty. It's still above zero. Uh, we have 104 victory points occupied on the map. Allied casualties give us an extra one victory point, 105 total. You can now see the losses. We've lost 290 regular infantry, 260 Volks Grenadiers, 130 of the other type of Volks, uh, 70 Pioneers, uh, 30 Panzer Grenadiers, some Nachtruppen. Uh, we haven't lost many tanks at all, which is really helping us. Adds up to 569. The Allies, meanwhile, 807. So that's why we're getting one victory point for the loss calculations now. And we are into the afternoon. It is now 1,800 hours. Well, that's deep into the afternoon. 1,800 hours on September 26th. I don't like this situation. I would rather him have to go through the heavy woods and up to an elevation. So I'm going to back this unit up one. Okay, we didn't take any intercept fire. Excellent. We're still over here. This is heavy forest. Now, we did move into light forest out of heavy forest. Uh, that's okay. Now we've got light forest and double, you know, a, a level two elevation. I think that'll help us, especially against any kind of armor here. He may want to go sideways. Now, this is a height level one, but again, it's heavy forest. I just think this is a, a much better situation to be in. We've got this infantry still in overwatch, this infantry. Now we've got our artillery here. This is the unit I was talking about. I would really like to move it into town here, but it's the afternoon, right? Let's do that at night. Let's do that at night. He's got pretty good readiness. So during the night uh, turn, which will be the next turn, we'll load him up on his horses uh, and go over to Zanre. But this time we're going to fire. And uh, where do we want to fire? Maybe we try to hit this armor uh, with this better divisional artillery. Now they really rip up soft targets, but let's see how they do against this harder target. So we hit that uh nothing now we took down his readiness and a little bit of entrenchment but that was kind of a wasted shot you can see all of the armor here he's got 33 m4s 14 m476s uh 11 stewarts and he's got some smaller tanks as well that's a really strong force okay well we tried to take a little starch out of him i'm not sure if that you know, made a whole hell of a lot of sense, but I thought it was worth a try. Uh, okay, well, let's go into the other divisional artillery here, the 1559th. This time, let's try to hit infantry, and I think we can get rid of this unit if we uh, hit this this time or get close to it, and sure enough, we completely destroy this unit. Two bazookas and one truck, he's gone. That whole unit is gone. Now we'll get into the regimental artillery, Again, are we going to have any luck against armor? I don't know. Let's take try to take out this infantry. Uh, he's got 10 GI veterans. We killed them all uh, with that mortar attack. Uh, so that counter is just gone. Uh, now we've got another... Oh, that was our regimental artillery. We've got another one here. I guess we could try to get rid of this unit potentially. He doesn't have much left. Let's see. You know, maybe we'll get a lucky shot in. Uh, we don't know what we did there. That's kind of interesting. We have line of sight on him, but we don't know the damage we did there. And then we also have this artillery back here. Now, we don't know what this is. Uh, minimal info is spotted. Well, let's try to hit this ar uh, this armor again. Just see if we can do any damage at all. 
If nothing else, maybe, well, we took his readiness down one point. Yippee. Uh, and one on the entrenchment. Okay. Well, I mean, that's that's how real life is as well. The artillery is going to do much better against soft targets. Uh, we've got this out here just kind of ready for the plucking, it seems. Let's do this. He's two of one. This would be out of town. That's four to one. Nine to one as we get concentric here. We get all around him. Eleven to one. Uh, sure, let's attack. All right, we lose 10 Volksgrenadiers, 30 total, 10 of this type, 20 of this type. He loses a Greyhound, two M10s, and an M18. Eh, it's probably a fair trade. I mean, when you do it point-wise, that probably works to our benefit, but you hate to keep whittling down our manpower. Now, he's really strongly stacked here, right? Do we want to do anything else? Do we need to do anything else? Uh, we could try to take this unit. Well, he can actually cannot move up here. He would be moving uphill. He has movement points, but can't really get up here. Okay. Um, we could do this. Nah, you know what? I'm going to keep the elevation there. I'm going to keep holding this pass here to the extent we can. I could move right back up here. Now, he's double stacked with the or the Pioneers now. I like that. He's pulled back here a little bit, so I think we can take this recon unit and get back around here. You know what? I think I'm just going to keep this as is. I could come up here. Yeah, actually, let's back up. Let's get back up on that ridge. Uh, I like this. Now we've just got an overwatch everywhere. Uh, we do have you know, the units here in town. That's great. Let's see, what does this say if we wanted to attack here? It says 2 to 1, 5 to 1. Eh, do we actually know that's true into an urban area? Not really. I'm not going to take that chance. Again, we're sitting at 105 victory points. We'll get more aggressive maybe, you know, soon. But I'm not going to do it right now. I, I think we're in good shape. This recon unit, though, I would like to get down this way. Uh, let's take him to the road there. As long as he's going to pull back here a little bit, I think we've got this covered. Let's just pull this around and put the recon right there. We could also take one of these Panther units or all, all, both of them, actually. Uh, but I like them sitting in town. I think this all looks good. Uh, we've got our headquarters. Oh, actually, that's what I'll do. Uh, well, I wish I would have kept him parked in town. Well, okay, uh, let's bring these guys out. Oh, boy, that's going to leave a big, big, big open spot. I want to back up here because I want to protect our uh, headquarters. Let's go here and then here to protect there. Now, if we... Okay, that shows us 4 to 1. I like that. If we also took this 10 to 1, that gives us a nice concentric. If we did Panzerjägers, it takes us to 13 to 1. Let's do that attack. All right, we lose uh, the uh, Maltiers and an Opal Blitz, 1 and 1. That ain't, that's nothing. Uh, Two 60 millimeters, one 81 millimeters, one bazooka, 30 GI veterans, 20 GI greens, and six trucks. Well, that was a really nice attack for us. And we knock him back out of here. Boy, I wish... Eh, do I dare bring these guys all the way around here? I wish I would have left this recon right here in town. I went one too far, I think. Because uh, I'd rather these guys be sitting up here. And I, but I don't want him to cross straight over here. I think I'm just going to leave it as is. Uh, next time I may back him up or I may bring him here and just leave these, these tanks right here. I think this little gambit worked out defensively. Uh, I'm not seeing you know, anything that I would necessarily want to move. We came and protected this. Now, he may come down this road now, but I, I think we've got enough... To respond, this is quite weak. We could actually probably attack this if we wanted to get crazy. Uh, let's see what the odds look like. 
three to one. Well, that you know, you get the tanks out there, it takes it to fifty to one. Uh, the Jaegers in there six to one. His readiness is down quite a bit. I think I'm just going to sit on that. I think I'm going to sit on that again. I think we're in pretty good shape. We will make a push for Aracourt before the end of the scenario, but let's get through this next night turn and continue to try to soften him up. We do have one last artillery to fire. This is the one guy we've got some visibility on. It is a mech unit. Let's take a shot at that and see what happens. Okay, we don't know what we did here. Uh, we just we don't have the same visibility as we did when we were sitting up here. Uh, but we took that shot. Okay, fine. Um, I'm tempted to just try to get rid of this unit. He doesn't have much left. He does have some bazookas. These guys, 220 infantry. is eh, fairly weak. Uh, let's also look at our cards that we have here. Let's just play the replacement card. Uh, we may as well keep playing. Oh, oh, I thought that said one. Uh, we may as well keep playing this. Uh, why not? Replacement card. Sure. Let's keep bringing replacements on. We get 10 more Nocturne, one Panther, two Panzer Shreks. Seems kind of normal. Oh, that reminds me. So our highest headquarters, you can see they come in here. There's the uh, Panther that came on. I, can't, I don't know if it came on last time or this time when I played the card. And then here's the Panzer Shreks. Okay, so they are coming in directly into those higher headquarters. Uh, they did not come here. So they did come in here at 58th Corps. Interesting. Okay, um, fine. We'll figure out how to get those down into the battalions uh, as we are into this division it's a regiment, Panzer Regiment. Try to transfer them into those. I think we have to be in the same hex to do that, though. Uh, but we do have some replacements, so great. I mean, we've got so many political points. Is there anything else we wanted to play? Minor Depot. We may screw around with that before we're done. No, not really. Uh, we could put a defensiveness card on these guys, but I think I'll just save those to see what the Americans do here. When we come back next time, we'll turn the turn. It'll then be the night turn, which will go by quickly, and we'll get into day number three. Uh, that'll be all the way up to turn, what, nine, I guess, seven, eight, nine, something like that. Uh, anyway, this has been Strategy Gaming Dojo. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, I'm really enjoying this. Hope you are too. Talk to you next time. Have a good one.